Hello, you beautiful people. I hope you're all keeping well. So, as I alluded to a couple of times in the last stream, that my idea for this one is to show you how to take photos that you actually intend to edit. As you'll notice in this, I take pictures in the landscape. I pop them into portrait aspects ratio, and then I will pop it onto Instagram. So, I'm just going to show you the different ways... In, or the different levels of editing you can do to prepare for editing in your chosen medium. So let's go. So, oh, what if I could get something interesting here? Because one little thing about photography is it generally helps to show people stuff they've never seen before. Golden pigs in the floor of an office. So I'm going to drop down just so I've got a little bit of that in there. And let's have a look at taking a photo. So things I have to bear in mind when I'm doing this is how much of this screen that we're looking at is going to be in the portrait. And the first thing I will do to show you is the grid. Now, this is in, again, landscape mode, but I find that the two vertical lines give me the best idea of where the portrait's going to be. It's a little bit wider either side, so I'm conscious of keeping the pigs central. So I'm just going to drop that back a bit because I want to have both rows in there. And it doesn't matter about the order of the, the stuff in the far right and far left of the screen simply because I'm going to be cutting that out. And if I've gone too far back I can always crop in. But And even the fact that I'm, I've got the, the pigs pretty much slap bang in the middle of these two grids again that means nothing because when you put it into portrait the s depending on how it crops and um, that center point may not be the one that you finally get so it's sort of you set it up then give yourself a bit more room and that will allow you to crop and just move around and get it exactly how you want it. And let's turn that grid off now. Other things that I find, if I had more time, um, and what I mean by that is most of the people who watch my streams I have no interest in photography whatsoever. They're just here for the stream. Um, so I tend to be quite quick in my shots, but you can actually do the majority of your edit in here. So here I'm just using the game's dynamics, its lighting systems, to get it to the brightness that I wish it to be. And if it's got it, contrast is another great thing to do. Just be aware that as you increase the contrast, the saturation increases as, uh, increases as well. So you don't want to be too extreme with it. Because if I show you, it is getting far, far more saturated. Oh, and that's absolutely no. So that's the most flat. Um, but that's maximum saturation, which looks exceptionally unnatural. And that wasn't really what I was going for with the contrast anyway. What I was looking for is to take it from the increased brightness, which to me looks a bit bright and um, washed out. I mean, that could be because I just stuck it on maximum contrast. But either way, it looks a little bit washed out. And I want to darken it just slightly. And what contrast does is it just increases the difference between blacks and and whites. So it's not going to do your highlights for you or shadows. 
Um, so, the gamma I find lifts the whites up a bit. I haven't quite worked out that exactly. You've got your reds as well, so you can really set the filter how you want. And I'm not 100% sure of this. So Vibrance is a, a setting that you have in your, uh, well, in most editing software, especially in Lightroom. So you can set that up as slightly higher. And bearing in mind, I've done contrast. So I'm going to have to drop the saturation. And the vibrancy just helps to keep a little bit of liveliness in that image. So when I drop it back to more natural colors, it doesn't look flat, it doesn't look boring. There's still some vibrancy <laughs> in that picture. Um, so that was one of the things you can do. Desaturation, black and white, cold. Cold just makes it blue. Warm just makes it orange. Red and blue, Polaroid, which would be more of a stylistic. Um, if you don't know what a Polaroid is, it was one of those cameras where the, the picture comes out already printed. Uh, reds, greens, blues, negatives, negative black and white, kind of cool. Sepia, which is like your really old pictures. So, yeah, I'm going to put the Viper in on because I'd used it and I'm sticking with the 53 intensity I may actually drop that a bit further because it still looks a little bit too fake so I'm going to have it around about 30 I do want to I'm so tempted to tilt this a tad as well you don't have to when you're you've got editing software because quite honestly rotating is a little bit easier you have far more control so I am going to keep that as it is temperature wise I want it warm so I'm just going to up it a little bit I still feel that saturation's a bit much um, that was interesting so round about there um, focus wise I'm going to experiment a little bit and I do apologize but unfortunately you can't just hold down the the d-pad and it scroll up I have to press it so it's a little bit slow but it gives me a chance to have a drink so cheers everyone So it's coming into focus now. And the idea is, is it's far easier to do your focal length here than it is in um, post-editing. Because yes, you do have some tools to do it, but they're, unless you go for the paid versions, they are fairly basic. Um, and now what I'm doing is I'm trying to decide whether I want the pigs to be hyper-focused or whether I want the people to be hyper-focused. And that's why I've set it at such a narrow aperture, so it's f1. And it's coming into focus again. So what I'm going to be doing is just looking at the people in focus, see if I like that, and then I'll look at the pigs in focus and see if which I prefer. Okay, I'm going to try really quickly tapping. Here we are, people are coming into focus, well I call them people there automatons 
Oh, that's not annoying at all. But going up to 1.2 worked. So it looks like I don't have a choice. It will be both. In fact, if that's the case, I'm just going to turn it off. Uh, so sorry for wasting your time there. And that is pretty much what I would do for... I'm just going to add a little bit of red to this. Drop the blues. And drop... No, I'm not going to drop the greens. I don't feel they make too much of a difference. It's always an idea to try and balance these. It could be that my mind is tired, but that really didn't look like it make much difference. Um, tint does make a big difference. So you've got purple, you've got green. By the way, <coughs> that it seems my headset is tired as well so i'll put that on charge after this drink and um, that's completely thrown me now where was i yeah so i've sort of wasted some of your time so i do apologize about that but I feel that I am now ready to take the picture. Let's just grab that. Oh, that's a cheeky little frame there and then. I'm not sure if it's an interesting picture, but I'm just going to experiment a little bit. As I say, I like how the entrance is framing him but the problem is, is his left hand is very close to that switch over there so i'm gonna try and hide it a little bit just by zooming in and this really is the other end of the editing scope because it is going to be quite a quick one and these are the ones that i normally take so i've just set up the frame his hands framed by the sort of circle thing um, his other hand's got negative space, his head is framed by the square, and just going to grab that. So I'm just having a look at textures now and see if I can make something out of that. Yeah, I'm going to have a play. Give me a moment. Um... I do need that to go back. And then field of view. Bring that right in. Hmm. I'm just focusing on the, the circle. That, that we have the circular window and seeing if that is actually interesting Sorry, back. had to let my dog outside hey no worries man poor little things they do need to pop outside for a bit but yeah I, I mean to be quite honest mate not really much has happened I mean I didn't sleep very well last night for some reason I just felt anxious and just made it hard for me to go to sleep I mean, I say for some reason, I've been trying to cut down massively on smoking um, for a while, and sometimes it just gets to you. So, I suppose the, the lesson to take from that is just don't start. It's freaking horrible. Because, um, yeah, everything else seems to be going quite well. Oh, if there was one thing I wish they'd changed was just to be able to hold down the D-pad button instead of having to spam it like this. What I'm 
going to do, if I can, is just make all of the focus on the, the circular frame and the textures in the back. This is an awful lot of button pressing just for an experiment. So yeah, the circle is in focus. I'm quite happy for that to move out of focus. The wall isn't really the thing that interests me. Won't do it. Won't do what I want it to do. So I'm just going to move that slightly across. Hide the UI. Get the angle that I find the most interesting. Out there. And that's the thing, is even though as I said, that you use the grid to give yourself an idea. And um, that's just an idea of size. You don't have to set up your picture dead center. So what I'm doing is I am going to, you know, even though it's on the left hand side of the screen, that's the part I'm going to be cropping. So although that is a cool poster, um, that's what I was interested in. That's the angle that I found. And there's no need for me to sort of move it across, reframe it and stuff like that. I can just cut that bit of the picture. Ooh. Yeah, that's gonna be something. like that I think let's just take everything off because it's already no it is too cluttered isn't it Something a little bit more cleaner like that I have some of this body at the front like in the, the top left because that's where this picture is going to be I'm going to open up the field of view slightly and just to give it more depth it hopes I hope that that will, I mean, increase the 3D nature of it, but also sort of separate the parts so it's not looking so cluttered. And I'm just going to rotate it a bit. I'm not overly keen on that angle. About there, I think it's quite good. In an ideal world, I'd be able to remove some parts from that, like that little table thing at the bottom. Feel a little bit of a rotate Oop. to the right, and that is my picture. No, it's not. So another thing to consider when you're you're doing portraits from landscapes is yes, it looks like a fairly bright picture, but if you consider the part so to the right of the post that I'm going to be cropping, that's quite dark. So I do need to adjust the brightness just a touch. I mean a fair bit um, and then adjust the contrast just to get a bit more like of the natural color to it and then I'm gonna get the picture I mean this will still require some tweaking and fixing in in, in editing but that's a really good like, base mark for me to work with. I got a bad Ooh. feeling about this. Yes. Pictures of tiny people. I didn't notice until the video editing the video last week that I'd missed one of those watches. And I actually looked at it, thought, oh, I'll keep that there just in case I want it in the picture, and then I never picked it up. So, a little bit annoying. I can't go any closer than that. Um, and the other things to consider when you're doing landscape to portrait is, you know, tilting it so that they actually fit into the image. 
I'm go quite high for this shot, I think, because I want to have that dome in there as well. Um, so I'm going from that sort of angle. So let's take that out. Now, I'm going to try and get as close to here, because I rather like this room. And what I want to do is try and get the circles aligned. So that's a bit too low. No, I am going the wrong way. Yes, that worked. I could spend ages doing that, but I'm not going to. Um, he says, going to. And let's try and get that a little bit more central. And then the next thing I'm going to do is actually field of view. I'm going to use it for a zoom. I don't want to do too much because I don't want to flatten the image too much. Because field of view isn't a zoom in. It doesn't make things closer. It just brings the back closer to the foreground. So you've got to be fairly sparing with that when you're using it to get closer to what you want to take a picture of. When I do string, I tend to do very quick snaps. I just generally set it up, but you can actually go for a full picture. So when it comes to editing, all you're doing is cropping it. But either way, that's going to do it for this video. And remember, we say goodbye so we can say hello again. Goodbye.